Hey, this is Jersey. You're listening to the Garden State. You're listening to the Garden State, the only New Jersey podcast that gives you all the news you need to hear this week. My name is Josh Sobo. My name is Josh Chomick. And I'm Jimmy Parks. Welcome back, everybody. It is another week here in the Garden State. Yeah, man. Was, was it just me that were the birds tripping a little louder this morning? It's beautiful out there this morning. I walked out my back door and a morning dove was staring at me. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. You saw one? (laughs) It was just sitting on my deck looking at me. I feel like you always hear them, but you never see them. I think it was a morning dove. It looked like a morning dove. What I'd imagine a morning dove looks like. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Because I heard one this morning too. Also, you know what's crazy about the morning dove? What? The pitch is always the same key. Mm. What do you mean? It's always, it's never, or they're hoo, hoo, right? Aren't they always the same key? <laughs> All is... my musicians out there, I'm pretty sure it's always the same key. Well, why would it change? I don't know. Different birds, different voices, different tones. I don't know. But I feel like it always sounds the same. I wonder if they have a different one mm. if they're like scared. Unless, unless it's the government, they have chips all over the place with fake sounds. Birds aren't real, that whole thing. Yeah, yeah. the whole like birds aren't real thing, how they're all like robots with cameras on them watching us. Listen, anything's possible at this point. And I would, I, you know, who knows, but I will say I walked out my back door. There was a morning dove staring at my face. Did it, it fly cre- away? Creep me out a little bit. And then it, yeah, it flew away. But, um, <laughs> it, it was a rainy, it's a rainy morning, but the weather's kind of warming up this week. We're getting there. Springtime weather is upon us. April showers. Yeah. It's, we've gotten a lot of April showers. Hopefully there are a lot of May flowers. Josh, didn't you say we broke a record for rain this month? Yeah, like something about March, March being like yeah. the wettest March on like in a long time at least. Yeah. I'm not sure mm. if it's on record, but like it's it was up there. We had too much rain. So May, I mean like everything should be getting green really fast, really soon because yeah. we've gotten the rain that we need. On the topic of animals, yesterday I saw my first bobcat. Oh, in the wild? In the wild. Oh my, hold on. Jimmy, Air, t- airdrop me that photo. Jimmy I gotta took see that. The craziest photo of a bobcat. Are you allowed to like post that? Yeah. We should put that on our page so our viewers can see the photo as well. <laughs> it, it's it was nuts. Um I've What was like the story? Did you just like chase after it? Or like how did you see it? Yeah. I, oh my goodness, Jimmy. He ran across the street in front of me and I like jumped out of my car. Wait, Jimmy. You got it. We got to post this on our, are yeah. we allowed to? I, I can look into it. I'll need to double check. Yeah. We'll, we'll, Dude, we'll post it after. That is amazing. Oh my goodness. So for the listeners, cause this is a podcast and visual things don't translate. <laughs> um, Jimmy took this. I, I mean, I didn't even know we had animals like this in New Jersey. Yeah. How big is this Bobcat? Um, larger than a house cat, but smaller than you know, a mountain lion. Well, that's the, some people will, will say that's a mountain lion. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> but, so it's a Bobcat. That's like a Nat Geo photo from New Jersey. It's, it's, it was really cool to see. Um, Were you scared to be near it though? Like that thing could attack you. Oh no. I was just, I literally, like I said, I saw he ran right across the street and I was like, no way. And then I was like, I tried to take a few pictures out my window. I had my camera sitting right next to me. And then it was just all of his back. And I was like, I can't let this opportunity pass me by. Yeah. So I ran into the woods after him. And then he just like plopped up on that down tree and looked back at me. Wow. And I was like, snap, snap, snap. How many of those are in the state? Like, are there a ton? I'm not, I'm not sure. Let's look it up. That's one of those. So last week we got into a conversation. I listened to last week's back because I was curious how the opening of the podcast went. Um, and we talked about rivers for like 20 minutes straight. I actually listened when I was editing, I listened to that whole section back. Cause I was like, wow, this is, I actually like, I didn't want to listen to it. I just started like getting engulfed into it. I was like, wait, what were we talking about? This is pretty interesting. But um, apparently there are 200 to 400 in New Jersey. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. That's so rare. Jimmy, you saw something that's very rare. I was so excited. That's amazing. I thought I was going to see a porcupine before I saw a bobcat. Wait, but your description isn't good. So for the listeners and for me, for my benefit, you said it's bigger than a house cat, smaller than a mountain lion. Yeah. But most people have never seen a mountain lion in person. So what would you, like what kind of, what size dog would you compare it to? Like a German shepherd? No, smaller Uh, than that. Okay. Um, Like kind of like a, uh, we're talking like a... (laughs) <laughs> I'm trying to think about. I was gonna say a beagle, but it was bigger than a beagle because it was taller. Have you seen my parents' dog, the Sheltie? No, oh. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Not in real life. Um, hmm. Interesting. Smaller than 
I, you should do 20 questions. Is it bigger than a toaster? How Bigger than a fox. <laughs> yes, bigger than a fox. Okay. Because foxes that's are good. pretty small. It's like a coyote size. Yeah, probably about coyote size. That's so cool, man. I would be a little, I'd be a little scared because they're savages, but still nonetheless, that photo was worth it. He seemed like he was more afraid of me than I was of him. Well, they probably don't like interact with humans often. What's they're so rare? What's the fine for killing a bobcat? In, bobcat oh, no in Jersey. Idea. Oh Lord! All right, you're not allowed to hunt them, right? No idea. I'm definitely not allowed to hunt them. Oh, okay. If you tried like picking up a fox, because I saw a fox the other day and it was so cute. It was just <laughs> looking at me. If you try to pet a fox, that thing will it will bite you. Correct? Uh, yeah, it happened to my <laughs> neighbor across the street. She had to get like rabies. Was she all right? Did she survive? Uh, she has since passed, but I don't think oh it my was. Oh, I don't oh my god! Think the rabies it was got because her. Of the rabies. Okay, just making sure because foxes are so cute, but like you can't you can't just go up to a fox and grab it. Well, you know, rabies rabies are a real concern. I didn't realize. I always thought rabies were a joke. It's a big deal, bro. It'll kill you. I've I saw a video. This is horrible, and this is why you should never go on Twitter. But if you go on Twitter, you see horrible things. I saw a video a while back of a guy. Laying in bed, he was um, in, in India, and he uh, had gotten rabies. And part of, one of the symptoms of rabies is you get kind of like repulsed by water, like you can't drink water. Really? What? Yeah, it's you, called. You need awful. to hydrate, though. How do you like hydrate? So that's probably why you die, right? So hydrophobia is a clinical sign of rabies. It's a fear of water. So this guy the, in the video, he was trying to drink a water bottle, basically like almost like dry heaving, like away from it. Like he couldn't drink it. And people were saying that once the hydrophobia sets in, it's over. Like you, there's the, there's a, like a, a 99.7% chance you don't live. Once but it, like, it sets in. I get you get hydrophobia, but like, you know, internally that you need water. So why wouldn't you, like, how would you become scared of water? Well, it's like the it's sickness. Kind of a trip. It's more than just like the fear of the water. It's it's like an inability to even consume it. That's Which crazy. I don't get that because why don't they just put them on IVs? I'm sure there's, I'm sure to, there's yeah. reasons why, you know, but yeah, it was pretty horrifying to see this guy not be able to drink water. And, you know, I don't know how many people get rabies a year, but... Um, my perception was always the Michael Scott fun run for the cure. Uh, yeah, you always think about that, and it's just like such a joke. But like, <laughs> but it does kill rabies. Does kill people. It does. So yeah, I wouldn't. Don't be in, don't be petting random animals. Don't dude. pet a fox. And if you're Jimmy, don't pet a bobcat. <laughs> don't pet. Hey, little baby squirrels are so cute too. But you got to be careful because one little nibble, it might get you rabies. So just don't be picking up random animals. That's it. I T- saw, take a picture, but don't pick them up. I may have shared this. I saw a while ago. Next to the washing reservation, there was a fox that was acting very strange, which is a sign of rabies, correct, Jimmy? Yeah. When animals begin to be too friendly and... Yeah. This, and like out during the day when they're like yeah. nocturnal, stuff like that. Yeah. So this fox is just like out at like 9 a.m. on like a Tuesday, walking along a little too gingerly and not afraid of humans. And this guy's trying to go up to it and pet it. And I pulled over and I was like, dude, it probably is rabies. I'd get away from it. Yeah, because that's when they bite, yeah. and that's when he's like, "What do you mean?" I'm like, "You don't go near a f- like it's idiot. a it's a wild animal yep. that's walking towards you, and it's acting like unafraid of you, which is not normal for foxes. It's probably gonna bite you." <laughs> and he he probably thought I was a jerk, but I mean, you look, say you might have saved his life. The fear of water could have set in there, and and uh, he would have been done. He'd well, been toast. If you captured a fox and you wanted to take it in as your own. Couldn't you like give it all the shots like you give a normal dog or your pet and they'll kill, like take the rabies out? Is well, yeah, you, you can do works? a rabies shot, but you gotta. I think you gotta domesticate them from like birth. I've seen domesticated foxes; they're pretty. They're pretty cute. They're kind of annoying the noises they make. Really, You've never seen that? A domesticated fox. Yeah, like that's people, cool. People have foxes for pets. I mean, that'd be cool if you like raise it, right? But maybe yeah. some animals are just not meant for the home. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> I don't think I'd trust a fox in my house. Yeah, you wouldn't at, get a fox At the June. end of the day, you go on TikTok, no. you see people with crocodiles, you see people with the most exotic animals in their house, and then people make it work. See, a crocodile is different, though, because you know a crocodile needs to be in a cage. 
People are like laying with their alligators and crocodiles, bro. It's Where so do you weird. find these videos? What it's websites are you on? Have you People ever are, seen these animal freaks are like laying with alligators, petting them, and being like, "I've I've raised this since birth, and he's this is ju- this is um, whatever his name is. He's twenty years old, and he's been my best friend since." It's like crazy, bro. We've talked about wow. this before. This is all what Chomix for you pages it's, on TikTok. Now it's all snakes and reptiles. It's bad. I hate that stuff, bro. But yeah. that, that's a good point. I was gonna say there's this one guy who always shows up on my for you page and he's like into like exotic and venomous snakes and he's like this is the most rare venomous snake in the world and i finally got it it's like what are you doing like yeah. why would you ever some want some people that? are out of their mind i saw bro. a video of this there's this guy in australia that makes videos fishing and he'll from time to time save an animal or capture an animal and there's like these little water pits that when the tide goes out that it leaves these kind of i don't know what you'd call them but on the beach jimmy you might know some beaches have like tide pools. Yeah. Is that what they are? Yeah. So he like goes over to these tide pools and there was a squid and it, it was a small squid, probably the size of like a, this mug. And the caption was, this squid is the most poisonous, the most venomous squid in the world with enough, like I guess the venom inside of it can kill 27 men. Wow. And he's like laying next to it, trying to grab it, like in the right angle. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why would you ever go near that? Was he a professional? Like, did he, did he know the He's effects? just an Australian. The Australians are not scared of anything because they got the most poisonous spiders everywhere, right? Like they got some crazy stuff out there. Yeah. They, they, I mean, they've, they've got some craziness. Yeah, man. And they, they seem. I'm scared of Australia because of that. You hear about like the crazy spiders and I see like snake videos and like, and all throughout Australia, like they got some crazy stuff out there. We have it. We have it good here. Like we're really safe here. Yeah, we have deer and squirrels. Yeah, like what's a deer? Cicadas. What's a deer gonna do to us? You know. By the way, uh, on the topic of animals and sex bugs, so are cicadas coming back this summer? I heard this last night. Actually, apparently, it's gonna be something that only happens every 90 years, which I feel like happens with cicadas every other year. Guys, we'll have the normal amount of cicadas. It's going to be bad down the Southwest. What do you mean Southwest? Of the country. Okay. Like we'll have our normal amount of cicadas here, but I think the in like the craziness is happening down South. I don't think it's going to be bad in Jersey. Like it was what, like seven years ago. Um, But that's what I saw. Why do I feel like, Every, like Jim, to Jimmy's point, every year in New Jersey, we're told this is a once in every 70 year occurrence. These cicadas are coming back. And it's just it's like fear mongering. I feel like when we were kids, I will say there was one summer. I remember cicada shells, you know, because they leave their shells yeah. on everything. Do you guys remember that? I remember 2014 was really bad. 2013 or 2014. Where it was just so loud. Yeah. That's, and they were yeah, that's everywhere. I remember. They, um, at the time, I used to cut the, my, uh, my aunt's grass up in Berkeley Heights. And up there, they were so bad. Like, you'd go by the bushes and they would all jump out at you. Josh, wow. I remember in Berkeley Heights, we were filming that year at Joey's place. And I remember it was so loud of cicadas. Like, we were filming an SDK video and it was so loud. We hmm. couldn't even, like... We couldn't even do it outside because it was so loud. Yeah, Berkeley Heights had it really bad. I think when I was a kid, it was even worse. But I just, I mean, sound wise, I never, the sound I've never noticed, but the shells, I just remember being able to find them every five feet. They were, they were on everything. Yeah. But I used to love catching them as kids. Cicadas? Yeah, you just grab them by the wing and just watch them zzz, 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 oh, in I your never, hand. I never did you that. You never did that? No. Oh, it was huge. <laughs> Huge hobby of mine. You so, could, I still do it. The, so the Garden State opening segments become in the ecology and biology segment of the podcast. We're talking about foxes, wild animals, rabies, Bobcats. floods, <laughs> trees, death, uh, natural wildfires, all the different things. But hey, we should dive in to our mailbag. Before, wait, before we do, this, do either of you have any details from this past weekend? Josh, what did we do? We did something together. What did we do? Shut Josh up. forgets. I mean, we hung out on Monday, but did we do anything over the weekend? Well, we got to talk a little bit about the solar eclipse, I feel like. <laughs> what solar eclipse? <laughs> so that was that was what I was going to say for the weekend recap. Mm. Let's talk uh, really quick before we get into the new solar eclipse. We had the, uh, the once in every, like everything else, once in a 70 year solar, solar eclipse hit New Jersey. Uh, Josh and I took a drive to High Point State Park way up north. Beautiful. Um, Jimmy, where were you for the solar eclipse? I was in Trenton, New Jersey. Really? Mm-hmm. How was the view from Trenton? 
cloudy. Um, but <laughs> just for a second, when it was almost at like its maximum, the clouds parted, and then I saw it for like mm. literally a second. <laughs> we went up to High Point, and the cloud coverage was horrendous. Well, we, when we got there, there was blue skies. I took off my hoodie. It was so hot from the sun. Mm. It was beautiful. Then 30 minutes later, it's crazy cloud coverage, and it ruined my entire shot. Yeah. Everyone there was so upset. Yeah, I kept making this joke. Josh was trying to film me. Oh, it was so funny. It was so bad. I mean, this kind of messed up. There's a lot of older people there, and uh, they kept, you know, for an older person, this might be it. <laughs> like, if you think about it. Yeah. I didn't mean it to be disrespectful the first time I said it, but then I realized it was kind of funny. But I kept going up to people and being like, well... See you in seven, or there's always, you know, 70 years from now. <laughs> and they were all like, they all started laughing. They're like, maybe for you. <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, I don't think I'm going to live 70 more years, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of upsetting when you realize that your opportunity is, uh, I'm going to have to fly somewhere if I want to see a true one, <laughs> which my sister was in Austin and it looked amazing. But yeah. Like the totality regions looked insane. Jersey. It was, it got very overcast where we were. And then when we were leaving, there was like a couple behind us, like just sitting on a rock watching the entire time. And then as we're leaving, they're just like, we love the podcast. Oh yeah. There I was were, like, that's sick. Yeah. There's some people that knew the podcast. It's like people awesome. watching us at all times. We went live on Instagram to kind of document the, you know, just what we were doing, setting up. There were so many people hopping in and people get crazy in our comments. Yeah. Some, someone was saying like staring at the sun will make you blind. Everybody, it's a conspiracy, like trying to get people to go blind. <laughs> I'm like, what is wrong Everyone with you? Everyone is a bunch of trolls. Yeah. But, all right. Hey, um, let's dive into our mailbag and see what kind of phone calls we got, what kind of convos have been happening. Any questions, comments, concerns before we do that, guys? I got no concerns at this time. Well, yeah, oh. like the mailbag has to do with um, kind of the big, another huge event that happened in the Garden State, which we will talk about, which was the earthquake on Friday. So yes. let's get into this uh, mailbag. If you want to call into the mailbag, the number is... 908-67-99993. What's up, guys? Uh, my name is Matthew from Flemington, longtime listener. I think I've called like three or four times already. Sorry for annoying you guys. Um, I'm calling because today we had that earthquake, um, and I was looking online, and I've been seeing that people are starting to make merchandise saying, <laughs> I survived the New York City earthquake. And I kind of rolled my eyes because, honestly, this isn't the New York City earthquake. This should be the New Jersey earthquake. Amen. If you look, the New earthquake was uh, based out of Huntington County. And by the way, I'm from Flemington, so very close to me. Second, the entire state of New Jersey was affected. Only a part of New York was affected. A part of PA was affected. A part of Connecticut, Delaware were affected. But the entire state of New Jersey was affected. So honestly, I don't think any other state can claim this earthquake but us. So, uh, yeah, I just want to call and say that, guys. Keep up the great work, and uh, hope you guys make some merch from uh, from this earthquake stuff. It's uh, it's a pretty pretty epic part of our history. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Thankfully, nobody was uh, you know no 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 major damage from what I've read. But but yeah, great part of New Jersey history. So yeah, love y'all. Have a good one. Thank you, Matthew, for the call. Uh, and he's sitting on a good topic here. He's sitting on this this very important topic, which is why does New York claim everything that belongs to us? There was like a headline from New York being like, um, earthquake hit west of Manhattan. It's like, no, like just say it. It's just say it. It was in New Jersey. Where did you see that? I didn't see that. There was like a, it was like a big trend going around. Everyone's like, why are you not calling it New Jersey earthquake? But I love how proud New Jerseyans are. Like, we're just like, why can't this be our earthquake? It hit here. Mm -hmm. Why is everyone claiming it as a New York City earthquake? Just like anything that happens in New Jersey. Well, the World Cup, you know, yeah. the Statue of Liberty was ours originally. All these different, there's there's a lot of different things. Um, and it is kind of weird. I mean, the earthquake was a whole other thing we should kind of touch on for a second here. Um, because we did feel a tremor last night. Last night? But yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday. Did you guys actually feel the one yesterday? I didn't feel it, but I, didn't I, either. I heard a lot of other people did. Yeah. I didn't feel any of them. Really? Jimmy None missed of them. Jimmy missed every, every earthquake. Single one. At least I I felt the one like fifteen years ago, so I can't be all that mad, but I love how you missed mm. them out there, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Well, okay, so the first one, the the main event, yeah. I was down south. So Matthew said all of New Jersey felt it. I actually didn't feel it. I was super down south Jersey. All I I was flying my drone 
And I just get a text from Sobo being like, oh my gosh. Then my mom texts me. Then all these texts coming in me like, did you, are you guys okay? Did you guys feel? I was like, what's going on? There was an earthquake. And looking back at videos, the first shake looked pretty intense. Yeah. Like you see homes shaking. I saw like Zoom calls, people like just panicking because it's like in Jersey, we're not used to seeing something like that. Yeah. I. Where were you, Sobes? I was getting in the shower. In my shower, we have issues with our <laughs> water in our apartment. And sometimes, well, we had an issue in the past where we turned the shower on and it would just, the, it would be like the whole bathroom would vibrate. I don't know why. It would shake? <clears throat> yeah, like the... There's, there's a that. there's a valve between the hot water and the cold water, and I guess it was jammed. So we turned the nice. water on hot, and it would just go like the whole bathroom would be like, <laughs> it feel like the whole house is gonna fall down. So it was like you thought that was happening, but like times of like ten. Yeah, well, I I, I turned it on, and it ha- what hasn't happened because we had a plumber come fix it, right? My landlord got somebody, um, but so I turned the shower on, and I start to feel shaking, and I'm like, the shower's broken again, and then I turn it off, and the shaking didn't stop. And Shelby was like earthquake. (laughs) So it was pretty legendary moment. And then, so I missed the first one. I was so mad about it. Then the second one, I was back home just working in my office and my, my building is pretty old. I just started feeling the whole entire building shaking. It sounds like the ceiling is going to collapse on me. I'm like, Oh my gosh, aftershock, aftershock. I immediately like left my room, went downstairs into the street just to see if like anyone's reacting and everyone was just chilling like normal, but I was happy. I was able to feel one of them. I text Jimmy and he's like, dude, I left my house one minute ago. I'm driving. I missed it. (sighs) I was, so I live on a circle, right? And I come home, my, my Jeep has a flat tire. So I'm like, I need to go to home Depot and fix this. So I jump in my car and not the car with the flat tire. (laughs) What does home Depot have for a flat tire? Are you going to like tie plug kit? Yeah. Uh, So, um, I'm like maybe 10 feet from like where this car was parked. And then everyone starts texting me again. You had to feel that one. And I was like, nope. Mm. Yeah. You missed out. It changed my life. Yeah. It was, uh, you know, I will say on a serious note, it changed okay, your I was, life. I was being funny on a serious note. It is crazy. Okay. So we're, we always talk about how we're so out of touch as people, mm-hmm. whether it's the wildfires that happen and we're like, Oh my goodness. And it's like, well, this is just part of the earth. It's crazy to think uh, the plates way underneath us it's, it are is shifting wild. slightly, and as a result, everything shakes. And which fault line are we above? Isn't there a, like Ramapo? A, Ramapo. Yeah. And that's, that's that's a minor fault line, right? Yeah. It has something to do with like the depth of the fault line and like the how deep down type is of it? Bedrock and like how deep are those plates? Like into the earth? I have no clue deep <laughs> probably to the core i don't know but I'm, it's so nuts how everything shakes and like i'm thinking of about my friends in manhattan on like the 20th floor of a building feeling it shake i'm like everything could shake and but everything was fine no structural damage no homes are all right it's kind so, of crazy so tectonic plates <laughs> are on average 125 kilometers thick can we get that in english 125 kilometers. So a 5K is like three miles. <laughs> Let's do some quick math here. So it's... KM to what? To miles. It's got to be like, I don't know. All right. So how many kilometers? 125. That's, so we're talking 77 miles. That's pretty pretty deep. 77 miles deep. That's like from here to... To LBI. Yeah. <laughs> but just think going down into the earth. It's crazy. Well, it's just like so wild. I think Which the better in, the better way to think about it is how tall would that be? So that's seventy seven times five thousand is how many feet? But when that's, you th- when you think about it in terms of like how thick the Earth actually is, that's not that deep. No, it's you're right. Three hundred eighty five thousand feet. Three hundred eighty five thousand feet tall. What's the Freedom Tower? Seventeen seventy six. Divide that by seventeen seventy six. Divided by seventeen seventy six. Around that, so 216 Freedom Towers deep. That's wild. That's crazy. And that's where it's all happening. That's where the party's at. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Science, man. Oh, man. You know. Earthquakes. Earthquakes are crazy because we, we all got stuff going on. We all got agendas. But an earthquake. It'll shake you up. It'll shake things up a little bit. And I was very thankful to not live in California when that earthquake hit. I will say that also. 
Um, like, I yeah, cannot imagine so where they there. get like those crazy, you know, we, it was a 4.8. What do they get out there? You think like sixes and sevens? Yeah. Before we get into the news, we want to let you know that we are at our office here at the Vintage City offices in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Hey, do you work from home? Are you tired of listening to your kid throw a basketball into your door while you're on a Zoom call with your boss? Maybe I just made that up. Maybe that actually happens to you. I don't know. We have a space for you here at the Vintage City offices. It's a beautiful space. We've been here since last June. Yep. Josh, what can you give me a single word this time? Not three. A single word to describe your experience at the VCO. Um, the only word that's coming to mind right now, Josh, I'm just checking in on the noggin over here, is brilliant. You said checking in the noggin? Yeah, checking in on the noggin, seeing what word is popping up. And the word is brilliant today. Brilliant. Brilliant. Brilliant is the brilliant. word that comes to mind. It's a beautiful word. Brilliant. Three syllables. It's been a great time here. Yeah, so brilliant would be, I think, a great way to describe the office. And if you want to come work here with us, You can call or text this number, 908-259-4488. That's 908-259-4488. Tell them them Mm. that the Garden State sent you and say, hey, I want a day pass. I want to come work for a day. Or just come get a tour and check out the big green and yellow neon sign, the Garden State. Guys, we are restocking our classic green t-shirts this weekend. Also, the classic green hoodies and... We also have them in black, too, because people keep asking for more darker shirts. So if you go to thegardenstate.com, you can get your merch today. I just restocked it this morning, so it's fresh. Go get it now because these are our hottest sellers, and they will sell out. Yeah. And if you buy a shirt, buy a hoodie, maybe a sticker pack, even a hat. The hat I'm wearing right now, for sale, it's fire. You're supporting the show, and we really appreciate you guys keep us going. So check out thegardenstate.com today, Josh, and today. get your merch. Another earthquake aftershock hit New Jersey this week with a total of 47 tremors in five days. I didn't realize there was that many tremors happening. I I felt the one the day of after, like the six o'clock in the evening one. Yep. Um, but I didn't know they keep kind of shaking. New Jersey's going wild right now. Well, the, the, most of these are like tiny ones. So like, are people really feeling it? They might feel a tiny little shake, but it's not in like the first earthquake. That's what I was wondering. Like at what level do you start feeling it like are you gonna feel a two Mm. if you're right next to it maybe maybe a little shake because yesterday was like the biggest aftershock yet and it's like six days later yesterday's was josh is gonna read into it but people said they felt that one well i thought the biggest aftershock was the 4.0 that happened that night i mean like the second biggest i think got you so it says days after a magnitude 4.8 earthquake rattled new jersey on friday A 2.6 magnitude aftershock shook the state on Wednesday morning, bringing the five-day total to 47 additional tremors centered around the initial earthquake in Hunterdon County. A 2.6 magnitude aftershock was reported by the U.S. Geological Service at 1022 a.m. Wednesday, about three miles southwest of Gladstone in Somerset County. The strongest aftershock to date was recorded as a 3.8 magnitude on Friday. The 2.6 aftershock on Wednesday and another of that magnitude on Friday rank as the second strongest. 11 of the 47 aftershocks have been 2.0 magnitude or higher. Wow. So, the, you know, and the ones beyond that are in the one, so they're a lot less significant. But I want to know, did people feel these aftershocks, like in the twos? Do, how need to how know. dramatic is that? Actually, I feel like you have to live right near the epicenter to feel one of those. Yeah. Because we didn't feel anything here in Union County. Yeah. I mean, other uh, than like the two big aftershocks. What's going on? Are we going to get more earthquakes? You guys think? I don't think so. Doubt it. It's so rare. So what's actually going on, Jimmy, with a deep, let's do a deep geological dive. What's going on with an earthquake? So the plates are shifting ever so slightly. Yeah. I mean, I think people forget that the earth is moving through space and constantly spinning and going a bazillion miles an hour. (laughs) And the ground underneath us is always moving. Yeah. Well well guys, 4.8 magnitude earthquake eclipse on four, eight Mm. guys. It's pretty much the end of the world. You friends with my mom on Facebook. (laughs) We are. Yeah. (laughs) Hold on a second. She's in my top five. Wow. (laughs) You know, I, 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 I will say, an eclipse and an earthquake back to back, if it, it's good for humbling people. We need to be hum- humans, we gotta be humbled every now and again. Because people start thinking they're the center of the whole universe. 
And an earthquake happens and you quickly realize like, I'm an ant. I'm very tiny. Yep. And then the eclipse happens and you're like, what the heck is going on around here? We got the sun and the moon lining up perfectly. Perfect. They're completely different in size, 400 times larger the sun is than the moon. Yet they line up ever so beautifully for us to get this eclipse. The earthquake is rattling us and um, there's nothing we could do to stop an earthquake. Like all the greatest minds in the world could come together. I'm sure we could figure something out, but it's an earthquake's an earthquake. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't predict an earthquake. You could predict an eclipse. You can't predict an earthquake. And all I could think about with the earthquake was in 2004 when that tsunami hit. You guys remember that? Yeah. It's like in Southeast Asia, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yep. And 250,000 people died. And you just think about earthquakes. Like we're very blessed to live in an area where we don't have to worry about that magnitude. Thank God. Because that, I mean, imagine California could have that happen. Imagine 250,000 people dying. I can't imagine a tsunami hitting New Jersey. Well, if it hit New Jersey, how far in would it get? How far do tsunamis go? It depends on the the, the height of the land mm. and the, the the whole landscape of the yeah. area. But um, like we'd be fine. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah. Also, you got to think of like say you're in the Highlands at Sandy Hook, like up on those hills, you'll be fine there. Um, when Just, a tsunami comes ashore, areas less than 25 feet above sea level within a mile of the sea will be in the greatest danger. Yeah. However, tsunamis can surge up to 10 miles inland. Wow. 10 miles. Yeah. That's put, wild. Put me on a hill and we're good. Like you just want to be on high land, like a high level place. Like as long as you're not like ground level with the ocean, you're fine. So, so I need beach houses screwed. So what happens to lower Manhattan if a tsunami hits? Ooh. Yeah, have you ever get, seen the movie The Day After Tomorrow? I have. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. They're just going to get wiped. But that's not a tsunami. That's like a tidal wave. Oh, yeah, that was very dramatic. It's like a 400 <laughs> foot tall wave. Yeah, but st- but it would it would get like, you know, flooded like that. Like, I do not want to be in Manhattan if a tsunami warning is here. Well, one thing that's interesting is there are waves. If you look off the coast of Portugal, there are waves that are 100 feet tall. So I've always wanted to go to that place. That's so crazy. Can you imagine a hundred foot wave hitting Manhattan? No. no. It just doesn't make any sense to even think about it. But I don't, know insane. If, I don't know if it would make it into the bay though. You know? Well, it's not even about the height of the wave of a tsunami. It's, a it's just a surge. It's like, it doesn't have to be a tall wave, but like you just get that rush of water coming in on you and it, you're done. <laughs> yeah. Most tsunamis are like 10 feet tall. Yeah. Oh, by the way, while we're on the topic of, New York and that waterway. Mm-hmm. Did you guys hear a container ship lost its power next to the Verrazano Bridge yesterday or two mm-hmm. days ago? No shot. Dude, this is all over the news. Well, it wasn't all over the news. Someone told me and I had to hunt it down, but I found a few articles on it. This week, a cargo ship stalled near the Verrazano Bridge and had to be towed for repairs, officials say. Weird. We're living in weird times. <sighs> Eclipses, earthquakes, boats hitting bridges. This is how uh, close was it to the Verrazano? I, I didn't hear it about was this under one. it. You didn't see the photos of this. Shut up. It was under the bridge. <laughs> Yo, that's terrifying. Like, what are the odds? Do you Does think this... they like closed the bridge like immediately when they found out? Well, let's find out together. A container ship slowed to a halt after losing propulsion near New York's longest suspension bridge Friday night. Officials said the U S coast guard said it received reports around 8 30 PM Friday that the M slash V APL I don't His know boat how, names are nuts. Wild. Lost its ability to propel in the Kill Van Cull waterway, the strait between New York and New Jersey. Wait a second. Hold on. So it is New Jersey news. This is the Kill Sound. So does that go up? Maybe it just oh. eventually connects to New Jersey. I just, that area is New York. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. The border follows Staten Island. So. Okay. It's close. So this would have impacted Jer- the, all our ports anyway. <laughs> and our traffic jams. Yeah. Um, so the boat regained propulsion shortly after, but it was then to- towed to the Stapleton Anchorage, just north of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, where it received an order to fully repair the propulsion system before it continued on its route, the Coast Guard said in its emailed statement Monday. What's going on right now, guys? Why did it have to stall next to the bridge? That's, yeah, come on. Uh, it's too perfect. Listen, w- listen. It's too planned. You guys... All you conspiracy theorists out here, let me tell you something. This kind of stuff happens all the time. 
but you never hear about it. Yeah. But why was it fall. next to a bridge, Jimmy? It's also like why after didn't it, that why one didn't it train in the derailed, of the ocean? and then like every train derailment after that was like, oh my god, why does this keep happening? But Jimmy, this one stalled right next to the bridge. Why couldn't it have stalled a mile out? Listen, hmm? I'm not saying our government is doing anything. Okay, that's not my conspiracy theory on this. I'm not saying like the government's trying to knock bridges down. But you got to wonder that what happened in Baltimore would totally be an act of war if if a foreign government hacked the computer on a ship. Of I course. know it was, that's very, very, very specific and crazy sounding. But I mean, why is it so crazy? I, I don't know. Like as far as like if it was an act of war, like if, if I heard that that's one of the biggest um, port entries in our nation. Yeah. Baltimore. There's, there's a lot of action going on. Over so there. like, it's a great way to disrupt an economy. You know, if you 100%. want to cause some shenanigans, I doubt that's what happened. I think that the people were just incompetent, but who knows? I mean, like it kind of puts it in perspective, like a boat can knock a bridge down and that closes a port and then people can't get to work. And like, it's crazy, but yeah, this is kind of wild that that happened. Right. Also thinking about like the government having a switch to turn on and off earthquakes, <laughs> which, you know, people are out there talking about that. What people? Conspiracy theorists. I don't know. Crazy people. Wait, you read that? It's all over the internet. People are saying the government has a switch. Yeah, just turn it on. This what is are, why let, we should let's ban shake the, the internet. Let's shake the earth a bit. And let's, let's make it happen right next to a fault line so it looks real. Well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a fault line? No, it's under the earth. Okay. So how are we sure these fault lines even exist, brother? Right. How do we know the government's not just my, shaking us down? Well, my, uh, my history books tell me so, but that's about it. <laughs> You trust those? <laughs> um, my geography 101, Man. Union County College. Oh, I mean, then I definitely trust it. Yeah. <laughs> it's good times. Um, yeah, this is an interesting story. And, you know, a little bit of a derailment to use uh, another, another mode of transportation. Another Shout out to trains. Um, but, yes, yeah, so we've had an earthquake. We had a boat almost at a bridge. Now let's get into the trains since we're talking about derailments. New story here. NJ Transit has approved a 15% fare hike for July 1st, despite protests. It's happening. We said it was going to happen. People could protest all they want and complain, but do you think New Jersey Transit cares? No. This is shrouded in all sorts of controversy. And people are upset. Frank the Tank from Barstool Sports showed up to, to protest he, himself. He had a great speech, but like he even said, like, but yeah, he could say all these things, but they don't care. They made up their minds already. So this is out of Newark, New Jersey. Um, NJ Transit's board unanimously approved a controversial fare increase Wednesday to hike ticket prices 15% on July 1st and 3% every year after that. So 3% from here on out, guys. Kind of crazy. So every five years, is another 15%. Congestion pricing increase in train fares. It's like they want to keep us out of the city, man. NJ Transit President and CEO Kevin Corbett said the agency was left with no choice to help close its more than $100 million budget gap after making $96 million in internal cuts to agency operations, ending popular fare discount programs, <laughs> and receiving no commitment uh, from state officials that additional aid would close the coming fiscal year shortfall. I love how when they have to make cuts, they just make cuts to the um, <laughs> to discount programs for the riders. They yep. don't make discounts to like, Hey, maybe we should, uh, fire some people. For I real. hate to be the guy to say that, but he said, listen to this quote. He said, I only have a limited, I only have limited tools in the toolbox. Corbett said that leaves us with two options, cut service or raise revenue, raise fares. We've been saying all along since the pandemic, we don't want to get into the death spiral that it seems some agencies do where they cut service, cut costs, and then there's less ridership, less frequency, and more and more people abandon the train systems. Now, this is an interesting argument. There's only one flaw in the equation he's presented us. So what are the two things he said he could do, Josh? He said he could cut fares. Yes. Or cut services. Okay. So he could he could make the fares cheaper, but the services are going to get worse, right? So he says it's a death spiral, right? Is there an option C, though, is my question. You know, we can only hope. As it would turn out, if you didn't know, NJ Transit is in the process of building a brand new office that's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
and that's going to help us greatly. This is all happening as New Jersey Transit is moving their headquarters and they've signed a 25 year lease on the most expensive option presented <laughs> by the agency's broker. So oh. they so their broker went out and got all these different options for offices and they spoke, they chose the most expensive office space in Newark and they're currently fixing up the space um I'm glad that new office is going to help <laughs> clean the windows of these New Jersey transit trains. It's going to cancel delays. It's going to make a smoother transit ride. Like, what are we doing? So this is interesting because Murphy, Governor Murphy has reassured riders that now is a fair time to increase fares, arguing that his administration has largely fixed NJ Transit during his six years in Absolutely office. Absolutely not. Nothing has changed. <laughs> Nothing has changed. It's just gotten worse and more expensive. <laughs> I still can't see out my train window. Uh, a number of improvements have taken place, including hiring uh, sprees to fill rosters and gaps. It has, that hasn't operators, changed anything. Locomotive engineers. Train's still breaking down. Growing the capital program from $60 million, um, to around $4 billion. So Murphy's doing some stuff here. Doesn't but mean anything. What I want to know is why they need this new office building. This is what, this is what I'm curious to find out about. Um, and I heard the number $400 million, but I want to confirm what I want to know is why they needed new headquarters and why they're going to spend $440 million on the headquarters. He said there's a hundred million dollar gap. I can find $440 million of budget for you. Don't get a new office. You guys don't deserve a new office <laughs> so ridiculous. in the most expensive building of all the ones that were quoted. They get a $440 million office. What are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, and Frank the Tank called this out at that hearing. So, yeah, so they're they're going to be um, moving to two Gateway Center in Newark. And it's going to cost at least $440 million to lease for 25 years. So that's the 25-year lease cost. Who knows what it is annually? We could do the math. Yeah. I don't have a calculator in that's my pocket. That's so crazy. Um, but what do you guys think about this? NJ Transit's raising 15% and they're going up it's five. It's the same old crap every single time, dude. It doesn't make any sense. No one... Like they okay, so with congestion pricing happening, they want us to take more public transit. Now they're raising the cost of public transit, so everything is going up in price, and it's just costing more and more to get into Manhattan. And it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a battle to the top. It's like everyone's clawing to get to the top. Um, so stupid, clawing to see how expensive we can make this state in every single comprehensible listen, way. Listen, if the trains <clears throat> ran smoothly, if there was no delays. If, you know, maybe I could see out my train window and they clean these windows and fix them, I wouldn't be complaining as much. Mm. But literally, th there's always a train breaking down. There's always signal delays. Um, tons of issues that aren't fixed and the prices keep going up. What are we doing? I don't know. And that's, I think, the voice of every commuter that's pissed off about this because nothing is changing. So... You know, there's no winning. There's no winning. I think here. we should have a, a five-year agreement that we're, everyone's going to work from home. We should assign it. Everybody's going to work from home for five years. Yeah. And then we should knock down NJ Transit, and they should have they should invest five years and have the federal government, because they just love to blow billions of dollars mm -hmm. with our tax money, <clears throat> have them invest like $200 billion and make a new railway in New Jersey. That's the solution. Well, aren't they like... I know they're doing that new bridge right now, but... Um, they also are going to make a new tunnel, right, into Manhattan. Yeah, eventually. yeah, the Gateway Tunnel. So they're that's going to take another trying. ten years, at least ten years, twenty years. I'm sorry. It should it should move. Here's the thing. This is the ridiculous thing, and we talked about this before. Remember, we talked about the Golden Gate Bridge and how quickly they built it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it shouldn't take twenty years with all the technology we have to build a tunnel. I know it's just politics. Like, I said this a, few, a little while back. Give me. $20 billion. <laughs> I'll build you a tunnel. I got that tunnel. Give me three years. Give me four shovels. We're good. Three years. Now, you know what? Two years. I'll be done by summer of the third year. Yeah. We'll, cr we'll crank it out. Me and a backo. You and the boys. <laughs> Easy. Like, a New Jersey man has collapsed all of Englewood. That'd be whatever, whatever. crazy news story. All of Edge, Edgewater that has collapsed That should have been our River. April Fool's joke story. <laughs> New Jersey man goes and digs his own New Jersey transit Just me with tunnel. with a hard hat. Oh, man. You know, we get the- Dies you know, we got underground. The, we gets got, buried alive. The union guys following this podcast would show up in full force with me. We'd, uh, we'd roll up and we could take care of it. You know, local- Pipe fitters. Local 335. I Let's made go. that up. All right. Moving on. Um, this next story is amazing. Uh, as news in New Jersey always tends to be. 
Two men are under arrest after 140 shopping carts were stolen from a New Jersey ShopRite parking lot. What could you possibly want to do with <laughs> yeah, 140 shopping carts? Are they just like stealing them and selling them? Are which, they scrapping them? What's the black market look like for shopping carts? Which, by the way, they're all branded ShopRite. So it's not like they were going to go resell are them. Are they, though? Or are they just colored? I forgot what ShopRite... They're, they're black. Par- Aren't they red? No, that's Target. Aren't they silver? It depends. <laughs> Jimmy, this is not 1995. <laughs> the they're, not, they're not metal anymore. Wait, they're not? They're the plastic ones. If you go to ShopRite... <laughs> I don't use a shopping cart. It yeah. depends where. I think yeah, they're gray. They're, they're gray plastic. But you could easily spray, pa- like spray paint over the ShopRite logo. Yeah, I guess. Maybe that was their plan. But let's find out <laughs> a little bit more here. <clears throat> a 77-year-old Cuban national and a middle-aged accomplice... From Newark, were arrested after <laughs> an accomplice. Seventy-seven-year-old <laughs> man. Hold on, I gotta read that again. A seventy-seven-year-old Cuban national and a middle-aged accomplice from Newark were arrested after 140 shopping carts were stolen from the Rochelle Park Shoprite over the course of two weeks. Authorities said a seventy-seven-year-old man stealing shopping carts. Sometimes in life, you just gotta be told. You it's all grow. about it's the time, hustle. It's all about the it's hustle. Time baby. to grow up. It's all about the hustle. <clears throat> well, you know, we it's all the grind. We all stole a shopping cart in high school. Let's be honest here. We all uh, broke a shopping cart here and <laughs> you there. Know, you put your friend in it. You push him Jimmy's into a like, curb. Not me. Not me. I've never stolen a shopping cart. What the heck am I going to do with it? Get out of here. Listen, I never stole one, but I definitely broke a few shopping. I cars. borrowed a. Sh- I borrowed a shopping cart here and there. You know? If you haven't been in a shop right parking lot at two a.m. with your friends, pushing them around in a shopping cart until you break a wheel off when you're like fifteen. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing with your life. Well, that's built back in the day. The shopping carts used to be built different. So they were more fun to break. Now it's just like one piece. So you can't really do anything with it. You know, every time I use a shopping cart and the one wheel is doing its own little thing, it's which is like, like every cart these days, I feel it's doing its own little dance over in the corner. It's bumping around. I just think of the days when I would hang out in parking lots, <laughs> push those into walls. Be like, like, I'm, I'm the, the reason one. for this. You know, I'm the one who knocks <laughs> who knows if maybe, yeah, maybe I did. I mean, I don't think I ever broke a shopping cart, but I definitely put my friends in them and pushed them around a parking lot. But all right, let's keep going with this. So the carts began vanishing from the parking lot of the West Passaic Street supermarket. On March 27th, Rochelle Park Police Captain James DePreta said, by early this week, 140 were gone, wow. the captain said. The total Jeez. value is $28,000. That's $200 wow. per hey, that's shopping even- cart. I wonder like what store they're selling these carts to. You know, imagine you spray paint the logos and they're like, all right, we're going to sell these to other supermarkets and make like double the profit. So reviewing surveillance video with the supermarket security, Rochelle Park Detective Sergeant Jared Shatkin and Detective Nick Mercown identified a distinctive red 2003 Ford Ecoline van. It's always the Ford van. 2003 (laughs) Mm -hmm. Ecoline van. Nice. You just know it's going down. It was shortly after 12.30 p.m. Tuesday, April 9th, when the van pulled into the lot again. Officers quickly moved and seized Alfredo nice. Ra- Rodriguez along with Hector Cortez of Newark. Man, they, they had a sting operation over they the shop busted. cars. Uh, it's awesome. So um, Rodriguez, who's listed as a, uh, on criminal records as a Cuban national living in Elizabeth, had an outstanding warrant out mm. of Edgewater. Cortez had an outstanding warrant out of Clark and Elizabeth. Both men were charged with theft, receiving stolen property, possession of burglary tools, and possession of property derived from criminal activity, the captain said. They remained held Wednesday in the Bergen County Jail, pending first appearances in Central Judicial Processing Court in Hackensack. So what do you guys think? Don't people like realize there's security cameras everywhere? It's like... How are you gonna, how do you think you're gonna get away putting like shopping carts into your van? Like the store's eventually gonna realize there's shopping carts missing. Let's look back at our security cams. Yeah. Boom. You know, I don't know. It's a good question. I think they These criminals are nuts. Criminals don't think stuff through. That's what it always seems like to me, honestly. Um and these guys got caught. Twenty eight thousand dollars worth of shopping carts. And who knows what their plan was? I mean, you get that many shopping carts. I want to know what they were masterminding. Maybe they were going to open a new supermarket and they just didn't want to buy the carts. <laughs> it's possible. Maybe. I mean, they're plastic shopping carts. They're going to resell them, you think? I don't think so. They're reselling them on the market, bro. Dude, a supermarket does not need to buy black market shopping carts. You never know. I mean, maybe. Do you know that world? No. Maybe like a Pathmark. 
Shout out to Pathmark. Maybe like there's, a, a, there's like a, a crusty Pathmark somewhere looking to get some black market shopping carts. Maybe but like a Dollar General. Like, I don't know. Maybe, Spray but. Spray paint them yellow. To me, this seems like an act of a, a crime of passion. Like they were, they were mad. Maybe the they, carts. yeah, something happened at this shop, right? They're like, we're going to go, we're going to take this shop right down. Let's steal their shopping carts. Do you remember when they banned the bags, the plastic bags two years ago? Of course. And then suddenly those. The hand the, carts the, are disappearing. The baskets started getting stolen from shop, right? So they had to get rid of them. Yep. So you don't know what happened here. We don't know. This this could have been a lot of things. It could have been revenge. It could have been an, an act of of passion to build a new supermarket. <laughs> it could have passion. been. It could have just been pure vandalism. It's all about the money. I gotta introduce Shoprite to something that I saw in California. What's so that? earlier this year or last year, I was in California, and my hotel was in the same parking lot as a shopping center. Um, and I got a shopping cart full of groceries and I had to bring it over to the truck that I was in. I was going to load up this truck with water and other supplies. And for a few days we're like, what is this like white painted line that goes around the outside of the, sh- um, the shopping center parking lot. As soon as you get the shopping cart to this line, the wheels lock. You Whoa, can't put it what? In. Yeah. As That's soon as it clever. goes over the line, the wheels lock. They're really trying to shut down the homeless in California, man. Yeah. The, yeah that's that, a huge issue. I've never seen anything like before. I'm like, what? You got to think that you got to think that they're the only reason someone, an individual is going to take a car. Typically it's because it's a homeless person yeah. that's moving stuff. Or, you know, I have seen people just take their groceries home. They walk to the supermarket <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and they just bring the cart back. I mean, that's a cool life. Like if you could bring, if you lived a block from a supermarket, would you bring bags or would you just walk the cart home? Do you think? I would just walk the car home and then just bring it back. I yeah, think I would just, I'm not going like, to keep it for myself. I'll bring it right back. But like, it's if, if I'm a block away, Josh, why not? So that's pretty cool, Jimmy. That's clever. I mean, all the, all there always is the Aldi option where you put a quarter in the cart to use it. Yeah. But you can still steal it yeah. for a quarter. You're yeah, buying it's a, a quarter. Cart. Yeah. So. A quarter when it's worth $200 doesn't make sense. So these guys, uh, the wet bandits, the sticky bandits are in Bergen County jail pending first appearances. And uh, we'll find out what happens. You know, I'm thinking they're going to get in some trouble here. Shoprite holds no mercy. No, I've heard Shoprite, Shoprite can be ruthless. Not gonna, yeah, they're not going to go easy on these guys. Listen, man, I've seen that deli section. They don't play around. Mm. And uh, if I was these guys, I'd be worried right now. So let's move on to another story. Um, out of Newark again. This one's going to ruffle some feathers on Instagram. I can feel it already. Newark, New Jersey is enacting a juvenile safety initiative, which will include a curfew for kids. The JSI goes into effect this Friday. JSI. All these towns, the curfews are just going wild. Well, the state of New Jersey is slowly realizing we've raised the generation of wild kids. (laughs) And they don't don't know what to do. So they're putting curfews on. I mean, all the beach towns have done this. Yep. This is um, nothing new. We're in the point. final hour. People are just, they just, these towns don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> They're panicking. Yeah. And it says Newark. Throwing curfews left and right. It's, it says Newark Mayor Roz Baraka uh, and public safety Fritz Fraj announced the city is launching an overnight for kids ages 17 and below, calling it a juvenile safety initiative. Under the initiative, unaccompanied minors ages 17 and below who are more than 100 yards from their respective residences between 11 p.m. and 5.30 a.m., the following day will be given a verbal warning and will be escorted to his or her residence and released to the care of his or her parent or guardian, Baraka and Fraj said. A second infraction within a six-month period will result in the juvenile being transported to the Newark Police Youth Strategy Section to be picked up by a parent or guardian, Baraka and Frosh said. The juvenile will also be referred to the on-call staff member of the Office of Violence Pre- Prevention and Trauma Recovery to assess his or her needs for services and or resources. No juvenile will be arrested for a curfew violation, Baraka and Frosh said, though parents and guardians will be referred to the New Jersey Department of Child or Families Office of Child Protection and Permanency wow. as a result of the repeated violations. So is this going to do anything? What do we think? Fritz Fraj. No, I don't think so. Like, that's a cool name. Fritz also a hundred yards. Like we're going to get the measuring stick out. <laughs> well, it's going to be, that's 300 feet. So like that's kids are just going to hang out in front on their street, on their stoop all night long. Exactly. Yeah. The friends. So like that's allowed, but I guess it's like if they're like in downtown or if they're like somewhere super far from their house, like, 
that's when it's going to start getting tricky. But like, when are, are they actually going to enforce this? I feel like there's so much bigger issues in Newark that like cops have to worry about. Like, yeah, unless the, unless a kid is causing trouble, like no one's going to bother a kid. I don't think. Well, why do we have this? Why does the state have the parent? This is an interesting thing we should think well, about. Well, because like, probably crime is getting out of hand with these kids. No, but I'm saying, like, why don't parents parent? Oh, yeah. No, because I think we're way past that. I think, like, I know, but these parents are doomed. I know. For sure, for sure, I agree. But when we look at a situation like this, the state the state can't be your dad or mom. No. You know, the state's not going to step in and discipline you. I mean, they will. I mean, that's jail. But, like, it's just not going to work. These kids are just going to laugh. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll go home. And they're going to go out and do it again. And mm-hmm. You know, they'll take their chances and then what? They're going to go sit with, you know, the, the juvenile member who's going to try to shake them up. You know, it's like a scared straight thing maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be super effective. I mean. Is it like a. Um, better than it, nothing. Is it though. a political move? Is it is it Braca just trying to like, you know, make it look good on him? Being like, I don't know. We're going to fix this problem with juveniles. I don't know enough about Baraka to say one way or the other. Maybe he has, he's genuinely trying to just help the kids. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the state going, we want to make sure that the kids are safe. Obviously, we always say on the Garden State podcast, or we're they, for the kids. Yeah, or it just could be out of hand already. Like you said, like parents are not parenting, so. Well, I was going to say that. he's freaking out because there's kids left and right just making trouble, so. That was, oh, that's what I was going to say is I think it's a fine plan, but it's just there's – there's no hope in any part of culture if families aren't strong and sorting these things out. That's mm-hmm. I will say that every single time. If your kid is being ruthless, they're either going to end up in jail. There's no way that the government's going to turn them straight. They're not going to scare them straight. They're just going to the yeah. kid, these kids are going to end up in the system. <laughs> they're going to going to end up getting locked up at some point, and that's going to be it. It's game over. Yeah. There's not going to be a situation where sitting with a juvenile, or whatever, is going to go like it could go. Oh, you know what? Maybe I'll stop hanging out with my friends past 12 o'clock. Well, do you think it would be a bigger effect on the parent than it is the kid, especially if the parent gets called from like the police? Or- Who knows? I mean, I don't know. It depends on the parent, I guess. Yeah. It depends on the or individual. Or they just might not even care. <sighs> I don't know. So maybe that's their goal. So let's move on. I think that we, we've touched on that topic enough and we can go on to something else. This next story is, I feel like we hear about these stories frequently on the Garden State more than 100 dogs were seized in a New Jersey dog fighting ring this week run by a man named, can you guess it? Hollywood. Hollywood. This dog <laughs> ring leader's name is Hollywood. Listen, man, there's, I feel like we hear stories about this all the time. I never realized before this podcast how many dog fighting rings are in this state. Yep. People are sick. Yeah. I mean, people are nuts. It's crazy. And I, I feel like these stories pop up every two months. All the time, and I'm blown away. Like I'm like, I didn't know. I I wasn't real. I wasn't aware that this was happening. Yeah. So, um, in Maurice River, New Jersey, authorities spent several days searching a Maurice River Township property in connection with an alleged large-scale dog fighting operation. A total of eight people have been arrested after investigators executed search warrants this week at two properties in Cumberland County and a home in Atlantic County. Court records say 103 fighting dogs, fighting equipment, and other documentation were recovered from one property Wednesday in Maurice River Township. Action News was there and exclusively exclusively captured the raid. Authorities say two dogs were found dead in a pit. Jeez. Bruce Lowe Jr., the alleged leader, who is also known as Hollywood, is facing a slew of charges, including dog fighting, money laundering, racketeering, and other charges. This guy definitely gave himself that nickname. Let's be honest. Yes, I definitely. I wonder, yeah, Bro, I wonder like how. A thousand percent. He was like, guys, stop calling me Bruce. I'm, I'm Hollywood. I'm Hollywood now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hollywood, the, the show is over for, for, uh, for Bruce. Several of Lowe's family members were charged, including his son, Bryce, and his mother, Terry. Profiting from dogfighting um, is callous, brutal, and cruel, said Attorney General Matt Placken. These animals are born into lives of abuse, suffering, and violence, culminating with hours-long fights, and frequently these dogs die slow and painful deaths. The alleged illegal activities that were uncovered by this investigation will not go unpunished. Law enforcement began investigating after getting tips beginning in late 2021. Wow, so they acted yeah, really been, quick. Wow. <laughs> 
They acted super fast, 2021 <laughs> to 2024. Three Must have years. been a pretty like insane investigation. Well, they they probably were stacking up well, all ha- the all the details, so they had a nice case. Also, maybe Hollywood had like a really secure like um, operation going. Like it was pretty hard to get in there. Does that sound like a Quentin Tarantino character to you? Like Hollywood, the dogfighter. Also, his son's name is Bryce, Bruce and Bryce. Huh, Bruce Low. Let's see if we can get a mugshot from this guy. Oh yeah, it's out there. Does he look like his name would be Hollywood? Yeah, it's that one. Oh, are you kidding me? It actually doesn't. I expected this guy to have like a mullet or something. Yeah, like I, yeah, not what I expected, but he's um, yeah, he's, that's the whole that's the whole like, clown the, the clown car right there that got arrested. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Check him out, <laughs> bro. These these look like a a, a a solid bunch of people. Yeah, you know they look like a solid gang of a gaggle of. Kind of looks of, like uh, what's the dude in the top right? I mean, right there. What's his name? That looks like uh, the actor. This guy? Uh, no, to the left. This guy? Yeah, who's that? He's in all the Wes Anderson films. Oh my gosh, legendary actor. Oh, 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 Bill Murray. Bro, it looks like Bill Murray, right? <laughs> <laughs> like maybe, a, Murray. maybe a little maybe bit. Maybe the shape of the face. <laughs> I could kind of see it. Um, dog fighting is the lowest of the low. I mean, you're gonna make money on having dogs tear each other apart. I think yeah. that's messed up. That, it really is battle messed dogs. up. Battle dogs. So what happens here? They're going to jail and shout out to the local PD for fit for holding it down and, uh, you know, locking these guys up. Gen- Attorney General Matt Placken seems like he's not going to play games with Mm-mm. the dog fighting. My, my buddy had a battle dog, actually. What? <laughs> what are you Co- talking about? Coconut corn husky. Oh, my God. <laughs> Was the name Johnny Hamchuck by chance? I'm not naming any names, but yeah. Uh, Look up Steve Balboni. <laughs> Come talk to me later. A coconut corn husky, man. Oh my God. All jokes, all jokes. They're yeah, this is crazy. Me. A battle dog. <laughs> They're battle dogs. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our last story. More crime in the Garden State. We have shopping carts being stolen. We have dogs fighting, and we have PTA funds being embezzled. <laughs> and Does this surprise you? The, the word embezzlement is crazy. I think about yes. jewelry. So we talked about this story when it first happened, but here we are now with charges being pressed. In Old Bridge, New Jersey, a husband and wife have been charged with stealing $50,000 from local PTA funds. I always knew not to trust the PTA moms. Like you just <laughs> never know what was happening. Really? That's no, a I'm, hot- I'm totally just kidding. I had family as PTA members, so I'm just kidding, but... You're, you, you never know. You just the PTA moms are probably in the comments <laughs> section. <laughs> yeah. My mom, they are gonna write us mom, a stern letter. My mom was involved with the PTA. All our moms were. Yeah, my, my mom, mom was a PTA mom. Really? Yeah. Dude, the PTA moms were the best. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? Don't look at me like that. Well, not according to this what, story. They make brownies and stuff. Like, what was the deal? Because this this PTA mom was embezzling funds. I know. That's why I said you just from ne- the association. You never, they were the best, but you just never know what's going on behind the scenes. From the parent you can't teacher trust association. Anyone. So, a township board of education member and his wife are facing charges that they stole more than fifty thousand dollars from a PTA and youth sports S- program. Gum bags. Leonardo Marchetta, forty two, and his wife Dana, forty one were charged Monday by township police in connection with the alleged theft of $41,067 from the Grissom school PTA and its vendors and $12,400 from the rebels football and cheer program Mm. messed up. Dana Marchetta police say had been involved in the Grissom and uh, Salk PTA organizations and the rebels programs and allegedly misused her positions in the organizations for her own financial benefit she is charged with altering checks by falsifying signatures and modifying an Old Bridge Police Department incident report, which she then presented to the Salk PTA board. Can't be doing that. Guys, 50 grand is a fair amount of money. Like To get it as a lump sum is pretty good, but 50 grand, like the amount of work this lady's putting in, get a side hustle. I Open know. an Etsy you store. You can do it legally so much easier I and mean, then don't get caught and arrested. There's moms on Etsy's and, on Etsy embroidering hats making 200 grand a year. Like, <laughs> really? You got to steal from the PTA 50 grand? Yo, imagine the uproar, though. Like, imagine being a parent in this school district and finding out when the PTA oh. moms are stealing from you. Oh, man. Yo, the uproar would be... Cr- I would love to see that drama. You know, something happens when people become parents and they're in, like, their early 40s. Like, if you watch, like, that wrestling meet with all the 40-year-old dads wrestling... <laughs> You're like, what happens between like, cause when you're in your twenties, you're pretty, you know, things are pretty chill. Like you're not going to, it's not, there's something about like 
these parents that just, they just start snapping. They lose it. You want to defend your kid, I guess. Like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But um, so police also allege that some of the stolen funds were then deposited into her husband's bank account. Mm. Uh, police also say two allegedly the two allegedly conspired to benefit from the stolen funds. Dana has been charged with seven <laughs> counts of forgery, four counts of uh, passing bad checks, three counts of theft by deception, two counts of theft, theft by failure to make required uh, disposition of funds, forgery by altering documents, public records, fraud. Oh my goodness. Oh, Falsifying geez. records, wow. money laundering, wow. and conspiracy, police said. <laughs> nice it list. Just goes on. Good job. She got a rap sheet. She's going to jail. Uh, it's not good. Yeah, I'd imagine jail will be part of the conversation here with all that. <laughs> okay, guys. Sheet. But seriously? Yeah. I think stuff like this is happening all over the place. Oh, people are stealing percent. from like PTA mem- like meetings constantly. It's just these people were stupid. They got caught. They they weren't they weren't smart with what they were doing. But like I feel like this is happening everywhere, and people are just smarter and they're really like covering up their footsteps. Well, it's happening on all. Here's what you can learn. Here's what we could take away from this. <sighs> we just learned about. Um, What's his name with the gold bars? Menendez. We learned about Bob Menendez at the highest level of New Jersey government, stealing gold bar- bars, accepting bribes of Mercedes Benzes. And then now we're at the lowest level of government mm. leadership, a PTA board. You're like elected by your friends, your kids, you know, other parents go, hey, let's vote him in. He'll take care of the kids. And even they're, you know, corrupt. So you kind of start you can't to think trust anyone, man, absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. No matter if someone appears to be an angel or a, nope. or a devil, you got to be skeptical of, you know, and have accountability for leaders so mm-hmm. that they don't take advantage of their power because power does things to people's brain. You start running the PTA meetings, you start picking out the new jerseys for the local football team and things get crazy. Of course. The Rebels, the Rebels football team, maybe they, you know, she, the first purchase was probably some new helmets. And then it was like, you know, I could use a new deck. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's the way it goes. That's just the way it is. <laughs> you know, you start, you go from the helmet to the deck and then you're like, yeah, while we're at it, you know, those from shutters the on the house have been really <laughs> Bro, it's sad. It's sad it's, that people can't really be trusted. It's because a shame. It's a shame. It's an erosion of public trust. It, it erodes my trust in, you know, any of this stuff. And you know, thank goodness for justice. Thank, thank goodness we have a justice system and um, the right consequences will take place. But do these people, you know... Like 99% of the, the other parents, you know, at least, are you know, telling the truth. Like it's always like the 1% that are just corrupt. I, yeah, I was going to say, I think I will say there are a lot of good people out there. I'm not trying to make everybody skeptical of anyone in any form of leadership. Um, I do think there's, <laughs> there's good people out there. It's funny, the, the thumbnail image of them on an article from New Jersey 101.5 is a picture of the school in the background, then a picture of both their faces on top of it, and then beneath their faces is a massive pile of money. The worst Photoshopping I've ever seen in my yeah, life. it's pretty bad. It's like, guys, but, come on. you know, it's it's sad because uh, you do the, t- the crime, you do the time, and, and they will see justice. So. They better. Yeah, because, you know, that money should be going to the, to the helmets, not the decks. Yeah, I mean, imagine how bad the helmets were going to be the next year because all the money was gone. Like, they probably could have gotten some flame decals and stuff. And oh, my gosh. So Swag.com. With that, that's our last story of the day. Any closing thoughts? It's great. Josh, it was a great lineup today, I felt. Yeah, it was a good episode. Good it's just Jersey news, man. It's, it's, it's on repeat. It's a repeat cycle. Like, we hear the same stories every few months, and we have to report on it because it's news, even though sometimes we get sick of these stories. But I feel like it's always the same thing happening in New Jersey. News 12, I just got a notification on my phone. They just tweeted, a fireball was spotted. Did you see it? Yeah, I saw videos. I, I didn't add it to the lineup because I was just like, what, what are we going to talk about? A fireball for like five minutes. I've seen a fireball before. A fireball was going through the sky. It must have been yeah. an alien or something. Okay. Well. It was pretty cool. Like the, the, the photos looked cool. If, if anyone's actually interested, look up fireball, New Jersey. You ever <laughs> see that meme where it was like me trying to, me looking outside, trying to figure out what day of revelation we're on today. Yeah. And, uh or what chapter of revelation we're on today. That's fireballs, earthquakes and eclipses, man. The world's falling apart. Stolen but with that, cards. you know, you have a place of safety here at the garden state every Friday morning for your New Jersey news. I think we keep it 
a buck with our listeners. We try to keep things very straightforward. And, um, you know, we're not going anywhere. Come earthquake or tsunami, I'll still be in this booth. Oh, why, dude, I wish the earthquake hit a day before, like while we were filming the podcast. How epic would that have been? It would have been so We would fun. have had the video footage and everything and just like we us should, feeling oh, the let's shake. fake it. We should fake it. Wake it. Ooh. Shake the camera and be like, so oh. a New Jersey man captured a shopping cart. And we're like, ah. <laughs> All right, that's, that's dumb. That was All crazy. Right. We should post it. Fake news. Another earthquake hits New Jersey. <laughs> Bro, it would blow up for like five minutes. We need to go to April Fool's get... story next year. I know. We, guys, we totally missed April Fool's this year. We wanted to do like a ridiculous news story, but we realized it like April 2nd. We're like, yeah. we should have done it. <laughs> all right, with that, we'll see y'all next Friday. Thank you, for, as always, for your support, for listening to us, and uh, for just, you know, supporting the podcast. You can get some merch if you want to support us at thegardenstate.com. We are restocking yes. our t-shirts and hoodies this week. So go over there right now, buy your stuff, and we'll see you next Friday. See you later. Later. You're listening to The Garden State. The Dirty Jurors.